Well, this is the final part of the Gladys Aylwood story and I just want to very quickly thank Phil um, for the amazing work he's done in bringing this story alive with the pictures and how he's made them move. It's just been really fantastic. I've loved watching it back uh, because then I see it with all the pictures and um, we know the story now. Uh, that this young girl from North London went out on that Trans-Siberian Railway all the way to China with no money um, and no missionary society. And there she works in this inn, this inn of eight happinesses, and there they tell the story um, of Jesus, how he now walks among the angels, but they tell the men he once walked upon the earth to die for our sins. And Gladys settled out there and we've told the story of the Mandarin and the foot inspector, how she became uh, a Chinese citizen, how she set up the orphanage um, and the prison work out there. And then how in 1938, the beginning of the Second World War and how there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the Christians at that time, how the Mandarin came and said that her God had become his God, and how she then read that Bible verse, flee into the mountains, and she knew for the sake of the children and their lives, they'd got to cross over uh, on this high mountain pass to get out from this area where the, the big Japanese invasion of China was happening. So they go on that extraordinary journey, her and 94 children, among the many teenagers um, and they travel for 12 days reaching that yellow river where that girl challenges her and says God's power is not diminished he helped people then he can help us now and how that Chinese captain heard them singing count your blessings came down and in that impossible situation took them across that river they journeyed on all together. It was a 300 mile journey. They went on those refugee trains. They stopped at those refugee centers. They ended up on a, on a coal truck traveling across together. And finally they reached Xi'an only to be told you can't come into the city. They travel on, it takes them 27 days, the whole journey. And they reach Fufeng and safety. Uh, they've got beds, they've got food. They can be looked after there. And many of them went into orphanages there. And that night Gladys read out Psalm 23 didn't she that God uh, was their shepherd not long after that she became very sick she was they, she was told later that she had a number of things wrong with her including pneumonia and typhus uh, but once she'd recovered she settled in Siam with the five adopted children she then moved southwest to this city of Chengdu where really she spent many many years uh, where they worked among the lepers in that leper colony uh, many of the lepers became Christians began to pray for that prison there was that amazing work in the prison in Chengdu and that extraordinary story of the man in his shackles and his chains around his neck and his arms and his feet and how uh, he had an encounter with Jesus and they could not explain it but when they found him the next day he the chains had come off he was holding his locked chains that caused a huge stir in both the prison and the city that amazing story of how she went into that wilderness area and met with those 500 Buddhist priests where they stayed for a week and they were asking this question question will you explain to us why Jesus Christ died Many of them became Christians. She was out there for 17 years. She ended up uh, in that Methodist church, which they renovated in that city of Chengdu with a, an incredible pouring out of the Holy Spirit with many hundreds becoming Christians, including many university students. And it was there she met the American missionary um, who said to her, have you heard of this person called Our Way Day? And she said, I am our way day um, and he asked her how long since you went home and she said 17 years and his wife had been raising money um, and incredibly had money left to uh, they it was to bring uh, missionaries home and they were able to pay for her passage back home she traveled via Shanghai where she met up with nine pence uh, who was now a mother and she met others of the children who'd been on that journey um, and communism was closing China down at that time and so in the spring of 1949 she returned she's got no no money to speak of no possessions no British citizenship no property she said I came back to England with absolutely nothing but the knowledge that God had never failed me there must have been a lot of shouting and I would think 
tears on that Liverpool Street station as they met. Um, her parents didn't recognise her, she didn't recognise her parents, but they all got together in the end. It was our glad, as they called her, she'd returned home. So she returned to 67 Cheddington Road, where she'd grown up in Edmonton. Uh, she promised her mother that she wouldn't go back to China while her mother was still alive, and she began to work among the displaced Chinese, many of whom were fleeing from the communism in China um, and there were also many invitations came for her to tell her story and so she began to travel around telling her story in the UK and people were mesmerised that she was actually a brilliant speaker uh, they all wanted to hear about this girl who'd gone on this extraordinary journey. In 1957 her mother died and um, she decided that she wanted to go back to China but she wasn't allowed to because of uh, the communist revolution that had happened there and so in April 1957 she decides to go to Hong Kong because that was the closest she could get. Just before she left the UK a man called Alan Burgess uh, wrote a book together with her called A Small Woman and it told the story and it was an almost instant bestseller. It was read worldwide uh, so much so that 20th Century Fox, the filmmakers, uh, bought the rights to the book. She signed them off. She didn't know that it meant anything or was of any value um, and they made a film. Uh, now, a pretty famous film called The Inn of the Six Happinesses. Um, it was released in 1958. Uh, Gladys never saw it. She didn't like the fact that it had been made into a love story. But it's actually a brilliant film, and it does actually, um, although it doesn't mention Jesus nearly enough, um, it does really bring the story to life, and it's worth watching, but it's very long. So you've got to, have a, uh, you've got to start early in the evening to watch it. Um, the, the, the film and the book gave her worldwide fame, fame she'd never sought, but she began to travel right out across the world, supported by World Vision. Um, she went to, to Europe, Asia, North America, Canada, New Zealand, Australia. Um, all over the world, people wanted to hear this story of this London maid who'd uh, been used by God in China. Uh, these are some of my favourite things that are quoted as her having said... I believe that God has called you and me not to walk on a nice rosy path, but to walk the way that he walked, the road to Calvary. She said to young people, God will not be asking you for your exam results and your certificates. He will only ask you if you have been faithful to his call on your life. She wrote, my heart is full of praise that one so insignificant, so uneducated and so ordinary in every way could be used for his glory. Well, she wasn't allowed to stay in Hong Kong incredibly because she wasn't a British citizen, because she'd become Chinese. And so she moved across to the island of Taiwan, which was then known as Formosa, which was opposite China. You can see on the map here. In between travelling um, and speaking, she established an orphanage in Taiwan and adopted a little boy called George who travelled extensively with her. And then in 1963, she needed more funds for this orphanage in Taiwan. They needed to move to a new building and she thought, I want to return to the UK and she didn't have any money to do that. So she began to pray that God would provide the money and incredibly the BBC wrote her a letter knowing nothing of this she gets this letter and it says we'd like to fly you back over to the UK and we want to do some recording with you and so she flew back over here's a picture of her arriving at the BBC at that time what she didn't know was actually it wasn't uh, a recording with her it was a recording about her and they were going to surprise her with a this is your life if you're younger uh, you'll, you won't have a clue what that is, but This Is Your Life was a programme done about sort of famous people where they sort of told their life story and brought all the people from their life all back together again. And it was an incredible evening. Here's a picture of the end of that evening. Um, and they brought over some of the children who had been, well, they were adults now, but who had been on that walk with her. In that same visit in 1963, she was invited to have lunch with the Queen at Buckingham Palace. What an amazing thing. She went, um, she didn't say very much about what they all talked about, but I cannot believe that she didn't talk about Jesus. Um, she sat with Prince Philip and spoke with him um, and and had this, this time at the palace with them, gave them a gift from Taiwan, from the orphans, which apparently is still there. The Queen made it into um, a, a fire screen uh, because she liked it so much. Always George was with her, and then on January the 3rd, 1970, age 67, Gladys Aylward died in her sleep out in Taiwan, having gone to bed that night saying to her friend that she didn't feel very well. 
Uh, a week or so later at her funeral, a thousand people gathered in the big cathedral in Taipei. Among them were a num numbers of the children with whom she'd walked across the mountains all those years before. Memorial services were held for her worldwide and she lies buried in the grounds of Christ College, Taipei, and they, they laid her grave facing towards China. In London, two places remain in her memory. Uh, one is um, the school uh, in North London, her original school, which is called Silver Street School, that she went to, changed its name when she died. There was a new building by then, um, and they called the school the Gladys Aylwood School. Here's a picture of it. Yeah, it's now known as the Aylwood Academy, and on the website it states, um, we are deeply proud of our association with Gladys Aylwood. Um, and then the website tells the story. Uh, Cheddington Road, number 67, still stands with a blue plaque. Uh, Elaine and Kevin went um, and saw it two weeks ago. This is the house where she grew up. This was the house where her father said to her, you're not, you, you, what can you do? All you're good for doing is talking. Um, and that's what she'd done. If you go out to Yang Chen, um, you can see still on a wall this sign. Um, I love this. Um, it's, it's a sign marking and pointing out where that Jesus courtyard is. The old Jesus Hall courtyard is still marked there. And also one of the entrances to the inn still stands there uh, to this day in Yang Chen. But her lasting memorial has to be the many hundreds, maybe it was thousands, um, who turned to Jesus um, as she talked to them. Um, and as she talked and talked and talked like she said she would about Jesus. I feel so challenged myself by this story and so convicted by her life and how she lived for God. Um, and my favourite quote um, was really where she tells the story and she says that she thinks that God looked down in the 1930s and thought, I want someone to go to China. Uh, and then she said, maybe he thought, there's Gladys Aylwood, at least she's willing. How willing am I? How willing am I? Let's just pray. Oh God, uh, we want to be willing. We want you to look down and think, oh, there's that person. At least they're willing. Jesus, would you make us willing to tell this story? Would you uh, cause this story of Jesus that filled her heart to fill our hearts in a new way? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for listening.